going to be drawing some hugging otters, so combining two together. Um, I found a picture of this one that I thought was really adorable, but it didn't have the body, so I'm going to take uh, inspiration from uh, both of these guys' bodies and these guys. So to get started, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rough in the basic shapes of uh, the bodies as well as the heads. So I'm going to first start off with a very, very soft circle, like this, kind of more of an ovally shape. And then I'm going to have tucked up underneath this one right here, I'm going to draw kind of like a teardrop shape almost, because this is going to be kind of the shape of the top otter's head and the bottom otter's head. And then we have a little bit of the neck coming down and a smile. So it goes down in a diagonal line and then it makes a slight smile here. And then we're going to give it kind of the same treatment. We're going to go down in a diagonal line and do a slight smile like this so that we know the shapes of the head and the necks. So now that I have those in, I can see that this one right here has the arm kind of wrapping around the uh, shoulder of this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it down like this to about halfway in the neck. And then I'm just going to draw kind of like a flat line at first. And then I'm going to do a diagonal line like this. And I'm going to say that this guy is also kind of hugging. So we're going to have directly below that, we're just going to repeat that same kind of action to draw the other hand like this. So it's kind of like they're both hugging each other, which I think looks really cute. And then um, looking at the length of their bodies, they have kind of longer bodies. And uh, whenever they're kind of sitting, they kind of scrunch up. So they have like these uh, bumps on their backs whenever they scrunch. So I'm going to take this one kind of looks as though its body's going downwards more. So I'm going to make it similar to this body shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the back of the neck. I'm just going to do a very big frown going down like this. Really big curve. And then I notice that with their um, knees, whenever they buckle up, they kind of have like a really big curve that comes back in. So I'm just going to continue this curve and go in like this so that we have the bump for their legs like this. So their body is really long and stretched out, but it seems shorter because it's all crunched up a little bit. So I'm going to make this arm a little bit wider and I'm going to go up for the shoulder right there. And so this is going to be where the belly and stuff is. So to draw the belly, I'm just going to draw a secondary line right there below the elbow. And then I would assume the tail would kind of come off like this. I'm just going to extend the tail down. And um, they do have kind of longish tails, so I wouldn't make it too short, but it's kind of up to you the length of the tail that you want to do. But I would make it follow the curve of the spine. That way it's going to flow nicely, but you can curve that up or down if you choose to. So um, you should be able to see a tiny bit of their foot here. So I'm just going to draw a little circle or a little uh, half circle here, a little upside down J it looks like. That way we have the angle and the um, kind of stretching of this particular otter. Now if I go back to uh, this otter, it kind of looks like its body is going off to the side a little bit in that direction. So I would use either this guy or this guy. I'm going to kind of combine both of them sort of. I do like the look of this one, kind of like it's like reaching down for this one. I think that looks more uh, interesting compositionally. But um, I do need to tweak it a little bit so that it fits. But I do see overall the body shape follows the same kind of guideline. So I'm just going to take this. I'm just going to do a slight frown like this. I'm going to make it go down. I guess we can just twin each other. It would be easier. So we're just going to curve off because I ran out of paper. <laughs> we're going to curve down and then we're going to repeat that same kind of hook shape that we did before. So we're just going to hook it like this. And then we're going to have uh, this one. We're going to have the paw stick out a little bit more. I like how this one's paw kind of sticks out. So I'm just going to have this one's paw stick out a little bit more. Kind of like angling down. So I'm just going to do like a little frown angling down rather than up. And we have this arm already kind of going, and we can just do a little frown to kind of connect it. If you've ever seen like a ferret or a weasel, that kind of gives you a sense of how like they have like longer, thinner bodies. And then for its tail, I'm just going to extend the spine down. Oh, it would be so cute if they connected, isn't it? Okay, yeah, we're gonna do that. All right, so we're just gonna continue the spine down. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna extend this tail out a little bit more. We're gonna cook the tails together. So we're just gonna do a little crossover and hook it together. Of course, if you don't want to do that, you don't have to, of course. I just think that would look cute compositionally. All right, so erasing these overlaps so that I can see which one's going to be on top. So I'm going to make this one go overlapping and this one going a little bit under just to make it look cute, like they're making a little heart shape. And you can make them overlap even more if you want to, so it's like they're holding tails, but I think this is good enough for now. All right, something else that I think would be pretty cute is if, because um, this one seems higher up, so its arm might be able to reach up. And I'm going to say that this one's arm is kind of like touching the top of this one's head, kind of like it's holding it, holding its head together, which I think is really cute. For this one, the arm, is, the arm wouldn't ideally be long enough. At most, it could reach like the other shoulder, but you wouldn't see it because it's overlapped by the head. So this is the only overlap that I would get for those other arms. So here we have this pretty cute looking pose. Um, I wouldn't really see looking here. Unless I had like the legs a little bit more uh, twisted, I wouldn't see the other leg. So the other leg is going to be on the other side of the body, so I wouldn't worry about having to draw that. 
All right, so now that I have the pose roughed in, it's looking pretty cute. It's got a little heart-shaped composition going on, which I think is adorable. Um, then I can go back and do some more details. So I'm gonna use this photo reference uh, for details on the face. Um, you can make this as cartoony or as realistic as you go. Um, I'm just gonna make mine kind of like semi-realistic, not super realistic. So I'm gonna first focus on this one's face. So if I'm looking at this oval, I can see that its ear, eye, and top of the nose is all lined up in a frown. So I'm just gonna first start off with very loosely sketching in Kind of a little frown at the top of the headline. Uh, I guess I can zoom in a little bit on this part. All right, so now that I have this kind of sketched out, now I can go back and add a little bit of detail. So I see that its nose is kind of sort of right here. So it's a little bit closer to the side than it is the center. So I'm gonna go right about here. And then right below that line, I'm gonna do a little frown. And then I'm going to draw the nose shape. So the nose shape has a little bit of a curve here, here, and a little smile here. So I'm just gonna do a slight frown on both sides, kind of curving in, I'm gonna smile it up like this. And you can make it wider, you can make it shorter, that's kind of up to you, but it kind of looks like the letter T sort of almost. And then right below that we have the mouth. So I'm gonna start off with a tiny, tiny frown. And if you're doing something cartoony, you can leave it as simple as that. Uh, this one does have the muzzle, so I'm gonna stretch it out just a little bit. So we're gonna go down, and I'm gonna add a slight smile just to make it look a little bit cuter. All right, so a slight smile like this. And then the bottom of the chin is what's going to be where the other one's nose is going to be going under. So I will have to kind of move this around a little bit. So bottom of the chin and then directly above the corner of the lip, up here above the nose, I'm just going to draw a simple circle like this because they have very round eyes. And then over here, this eye is a little bit bigger because it's a little bit closer to us, but not too much. And I am going to do the typical thing I usually do. I'm just going to fill it in and leave a little white highlight. And now for the shape of the head, it does have, it's just very round. There's not too much cheek definition. If you wanted to add a cheek bump, because you're stylizing it, right after you get to the eye, you can't add a slight bump in order to give it a little bit more of a cheek, but that's kind of up to you what style you're going for. But um, on this side right here, I do notice that it does have a little bit more of a diagonal line where the ear is going to go. So right here on the top of the forehead, I'm gonna stretch it out in a diagonal line. I'm gonna add a bump coming off the side of the head that's gonna to touch the bottom of that line that we drew to connect the eye and nose and ears together. And then you can draw like the little ear fold. So I'm just gonna draw a secondary line and stop when I touch the head so that I have the little ear fold. And then I can just come down to the neck area. And so now I have my little otter head. Now, if you want to add more details, you can add like some more fluffs. Um, they do have kind of a fluffy texture. So if you wanna add little uh, kind of like Z lines, like little zigzags and like, cross hatchy lines just make it kind of random don't make it perfect if you're trying to make it perfect you might end up with more of a machine than an otter which probably isn't what you're going for unless you're making a mechanical otter then uh more power to you i see in the pictures that there's just a couple whiskers if you're going for realism uh, it might help out to add some whiskers if you're going for cartoony you don't have to have whiskers it's kind of up to you all right now before i move on to the rest of the body i'm going to go back and do this guy's head so here i see that um i need to scoot his head up just a little bit to kind of make up for this little, I love, I, love, I love this part, like the little curve that his nose is fitting perfectly below this guy's nose here. So right here, I'm just gonna draw a little smile like this to define the edge of the nose. And then I'm just going to very carefully draw a little smile coming down like this, making sure it's not too big. So notice that I'm kind of like just ignoring my shape here. I, I'm making sure I'm aware of how big it needs to be, but I'm also making sure that it's fitting more of the composition and the shape that I want it to be in. So I'm gonna make the head go up a little bit higher, doing a little frown like this. Now, once I touch this paw though, now knowing otter paws, they're kind of like cat paws except longer fingers, I guess. So I'm just gonna draw kind of like a little frown like this. There's one, two, three, and then I'm gonna draw a small one, four, and I'm just gonna loop it back up like this. That way it has that, this otter's hand is overlapping his head just to make it look pretty cute. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and continue the rest of the head. So after I have the muzzle area, I have a little bit of a cheek area. So right here, after I have my nuzzle, my, my nuzzle, oh, nuzzles. All right, after I have my muzzle, I'm just gonna do a little smile that goes over to the cheek like this. So it's almost like you're drawing like a really stretched out W there. And then the nose is going to go on the tip of this. I'm just gonna draw like a little circly shape for the nose. I'm just gonna fill it in. That way I can tell that that's where the nose is at. Now, the mouth isn't visible on here. If you want to draw a mouth, it would just be really, really low on the muzzle. So if you wanted to draw a mouth, you can, but that's kind of up to you. Now, um, if I look here, I can see that there's still that kind of the nose, eye, and ears all lining up on a single line. So if I'm looking at, <laughs> if I'm looking here, I see the nose, ear, and eye all line up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very lightly draw a slight frown. And then on that frown, I'm gonna draw the eye in the middle right here. 
So I'm just gonna start with a little frown and do a little smile, kind of keep it kind of round. And of course you can fill it in. I'm gonna make this one looking at the other one to make it look cute. And then over here on the ear, they have very tiny ears right there at the back of that head shape that I originally drew. I'm just gonna do a little small frown like this. And then I'm gonna draw a secondary frown on the inside and then maybe fill it in just so that I know that that's the inside of the ear, just so I can tell. All right, and then of course you can add some details. So you can add like little eyebrow bumps, you know, like little muzzle bumps, it's up to you. So you can make it as detailed or as simple as you want to. I'm gonna add a couple fluffy lines on the edge of the chin just to make it look cute. Okay, so now that I have the um, faces done, I'm gonna zoom back out so we can look a little bit at the So as we're doing these bodies, I'm just looking back and forth between these two pictures just because it has kind of sort of the things that I'm looking for and also looking at this one. So for this one right here, I see on their hands, what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna draw this claw. So because this one's claw is kind of facing side of you, I don't see every single one. I'm just gonna see one finger. So I'm just drawing with a parenthesis that's kind of stretched out, two finger that's gonna overlap and touch the other one. And then I see kind of a very thin sliver of the third finger and that's all I see. And after that, I'm just going to bring it back up a little bit. I do see a little bit of the paw pad. So as soon as I get done with the fingers before I move on to the elbow, I'm gonna draw a very small smile like this for the paw pad. That's just like the pad of their paws. And then I'm going to go down to the elbow. Now, as you're going down to the elbow, if you are adding texture, I would add a little bit of fluff texture because they do have kind of fluffy arms. And then I'm gonna do um, under here, I see where the fluff of the cheek is overlapping the arm. So I'm just going to have a little bit of this otter's fluff kind of overlapping this arm just to help make it feel as though they're like hugging kind of tight so that they're overlapping their fur. All right, then right here, I'm gonna do the exact opposite. So I'll just repeat this same process, but facing the other way. So I'm just going to go kind of up, and then whenever I'm ready for the paw, I'm just going to curve down. And then I'm gonna have a one parenthesis, two parenthesis, and this one already has its third toe. If you wanna see more toes or if you wanna to angle those more, you definitely can, that's up to you. I'm just gonna stick with the three because the fourth one would be on the other side, kind of tucked up underneath the fur. I'm gonna add a little bit of that parenthesis for the paw pad. And then this time I'm just gonna add that fur all the way down for his elbow, and then maybe fluffing it all the way back until we get to the end of the arm. Now, once I've gotten to the end of the arm, then I can see where this one is now overlapping this one, and this is this one's end of the arm. So then I can just add some fluff going in this direction. So here's where I have my overlaps. Those crosses work out pretty nicely. If you want to add some more details, like uh, maybe you want to add the top of this arm, you would just go down for the elbow and then add some fluff for this one's torso where it would overlap. So it's just going to be kind of like a little diagonal line where this is the top of the arm and this one right here would be just like the floof of its neck going down where you wouldn't really see the other part of it because it's being overlapped by this dude. All right, so once you're satisfied with that, then we can move on to the next part. So for uh, the rest of this is actually like pretty simple. So the only thing that's gonna be detailed is the foot. So here I'm just gonna look at this guy's foot down here. Actually, hmm, we'll use this guy's foot because that feels more natural. All right, so I'm just gonna look at this foot as I'm drawing this one. So I'm going to erase it slightly so I can see a little bit more detail, but I do need to know that this is about how big I want it. So I'm just gonna start off with a slight diagonal line. And then I draw one toe by drawing a little uh, kind of parenthesis. I'm gonna start on the parenthesis like this. Then I'm just going to draw another frowny loop like this. I'm gonna have the other one connect doing the same shape, so another frowny loop. And then one more frowny loop like this that's gonna go up until I touch the, sh um, not the shoulder, the kneecap. So then all I'm gonna do after this is I'm just gonna add some fluff, just adding some slight zigzags until I get to the top of the knee. And then I can add some fluff coming down However fluffy you want your otter. If you want like a super fluffy otter, draw like longer, fluffier lines. If you want a smoother otter, keep them pretty simple. And once again, if you want to go for more of a stylized approach, you can keep it super smooth if you wanted to. All right, and then um, that's it for that foot. Now for this other foot, I can kind of look at uh, this dude. I liked how his foot was kind of tucked up underneath his body. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do kind of what I did for these uh, paws up here. I'm just gonna see like maybe like one toe. This time I'm gonna draw like the letter C, a little bit stretched out, another toe. And then here's my third toe. And I will draw that fourth toe, but I'm going to tuck it right underneath the leg. So that I see all four of my toes, but they're kind of tucked. Now this is a little bit more splayed out because it's kind of gripping the rock a little more. This one's kind of more comfortable, so it's a little bit more relaxed. You can draw them both relaxed, or you can draw them both more stretched. It's kind of up to you. All right, then I'm going to do the same thing I did with before. I'm just going to fluff up that otter leg until we get overlapping that just slightly. And then the rest of this is all just going to be fluffing. So it's, it depends on how fluffy you want the rest of this to be. You can leave all this smooth if you want to. But I'm just going to add a little bit of texture as I go down. 
and I'm gonna add a little bit of texture on the underside of the leg. I will leave a little gap right here just so I can see where the body and the tail meets. Um, that's not always necessary. Like on this one, I feel like it would be more appropriate to just cover all of it because he's overlapping his tail a little bit more. So I'm just gonna add a lot of fluff. Now I'm saying he, but I really don't know the genders. I'm just, I always call everything he, so sorry if, it, if, it's, if this is a girl otter or whatever, my bad. All right, so I'm just adding fluffies to these wrinkly areas as well, because that's where you have some overlaps. And then last but not least is their tail. So I'm just gonna add some fluff fluffs to the end of their tail. This one's just gonna tuck up underneath, and this one's going to fluff fluff all the way down here till we get the adequate amount of floof. Whenever you're done, of course, as always, you can erase any lines that you don't feel like you need anymore. You can keep them up to you. I personally like sketchy lines, so I don't usually erase all of them, but if it bothers you, definitely feel free to erase however much that you need. All right, now that I have my erased lines, then I can go back and add any like coloring or shading. I usually go for the shading route just because uh, these are just sketches in my sketchbook or wherever, so I'm not really too concerned about making it look super rendered, but at this point, if you wanted to, uh, definitely feel free to render it out, make it look super nice and neat. Um, you can use references, you can do this out of your head. Uh, if you're coloring them, feel free to color them however you want. So you can have like uh, purple and green otters, doesn't matter. Um, this is art, you can do whatever the heck you want. You can also have like spotted or striped otters, I don't know. <laughs> so you can do whatever you want to with these things. So I'm just adding a little bit of shading where, um, just like where I'm assuming that there'd be some shadows because of the overlaps and stuff, just to kind of help separate them out a little bit. All right, and there we go. We got uh, two otters hugging, being really adorable. <laughs> I hope you had fun, and uh, feel free to let me know what you'd like to draw next. Thanks. Bye.